Hey, what is up there guys? This is Corb, and by popular request, you guys have been spamming me to cover Warlock talents for WoW Classics. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a go. Now, quick fucking five second disclaimer. I don't ever look up any builds, I just do whatever the hell I wanna do, whatever feels good in the moment, and that's the talent builds we're gonna be covering in this here video. Disclaimer over. Okay, on your screen right now, you should see a blank slate. Classic Warlock Talent Calculator. So what I'm going to do is cover two leveling builds, one distinctly better than the other because it's not destruction, and then I'm going to cover three specs that I'm really, really looking forward to trying out at endgame. So let's go ahead and just get started. Best spec for leveling, Affliction. There's really no secret about it. you got to go Affliction if you want to level quickly. I'm going Destruction because I'm an idiot. But Affliction, you want five points in Improved Corruption. You want two points in Improved Life Tap. Why? Improved Corruption, I mean, it just speaks for itself. Uh, improved Life Tap, this is amazing. This is this is your goddamn bread and butter. This is the reason. It's honestly the main reason why Affliction Leveling is just so, so goddamn good compared to either of the other specs. Life Tap, you're gonna be spamming it constantly. Dungeons, solo leveling, it doesn't matter. It's just amazing. The value that you get out of every five Life Taps you cast, you're getting a free Life Tap. Think of it like that, it's just fucking incredible. Right here, I would highly recommend pumping a few points into Suppression, just to kind of unlock the next tier. Suppression is actually really, really good, by the way, uh, especially because, you know, a lot of the times you're up against orange mobs and what have you in dungeons, especially towards the end of dungeons, even if you joined at the right level. Orange mobs everywhere! You know, reduced chance to resist is really, really nice. Now, Amplify Curse, I think it's worth a value point. I think it's okay, but... I would prioritize Improved Curse of Agony uh, ahead of Amplify Curse, at least first. It's a three minute cooldown. It's just not really, it's not really that good. In the long term, a few points in Improved Curse of Agony are a lot more valuable to you while leveling um, than Improved, you know, or Amplify Curse rather. We are going to dump a point into it now though. Just make sure you get Improved Curse of Agony first. Uh, right here, I would go back and put some more points into Suppression just to unlock the next tier. Um, we are deliberately avoiding Fell Concentration by the way. Just because if you're leveling properly, and you're letting your Void Walker tank, um, and you have good tanks in dungeons, so you're not over aggroing, you really don't need this kind of resistance to um, being pushed back during your casts with Fell Concentration. It's just not that valuable if you're playing the game right, you know, if you're letting your Voidy tank correctly, and yeah. Skip out on that. Nightfall, really, really good for those instant Shadow Balls. Grim Reach, obviously excellent. Um, and then one more point in Suppression to unlock the next tier. Suppression, good, good stuff. By the way, I should just explain, the reason we can see like a big grey area over here in the talent tree is because if I mouse over Destruction tooltip, it's like already cutting it off a little bit, but you can kind of see what it says, so it's not that bad, but uh, yeah, we just gotta have some extra room over there, goddammit. Anyways, next tier, Siphon Life, really, really good. Do not, I repeat, do not be baited into taking Case of Exhaustion. I, I mean... Look, some people might disagree, I think that this is awful. I think that Curse of Exhaustion is only really good if you're ganking a lot and you're involved in a lot of world PvP while leveling, um, or if you're just intent on soloing elite mobs, for example, while leveling, and you're just not doing things in groups, which I don't understand, you're just doing things the slow way at that point, and this spec is all about efficiency and doing things quickly and being self-sufficient, and yeah, Curse of Exhaustion doesn't offer you any damage, its movement slow is only 10% with one point in this. You have to spend five points in total just to get a 30% movement slow again, which does no damage, which takes the place of your case of agony on a target. It's just no good, man. Skip out on this crap. Yeah, it's okay if you use Amplify Chaos Cob. No, but it, it, it's, just, it's just shit. Okay, to skip it. Um, next, we're going to go back for Improved Drain Life. This is really, really good. Again, it's kind of like Improved Life Tap. It just increases your efficiency overall. Your Life Tap a few times, you go down to 70% health. You know, speaking into this, whoops, was that too many points? No, four points into this to unlock the next tier. It's just going to make you that much more efficient. Five points in Shadow Mastery, kind of a no-brainer, and one value point in Dak Pact. Now, my brains are a little bit scrambled and I'm forgetting what I've said and what I haven't said already because this is actually like the third time I'm trying to record this fucking video because the goddamn microphone stopped working halfway through the last recording, uh, which was pretty upsetting, but demonology versus destruction. What do you spend your remaining 20 points in? Um, it's really up to you, honestly. I think that demonology is fine. If you're solo questing a lot and you want to kind of dump points into the Hellstone and the and the Embrace and spam some points into Void Walker and things like that, uh, maybe even in some improved health funnel, then that's totally fine. But what I would do personally, because, you know, I love spamming dungeons, is 
go for more of an imp oriented spec. So what I would do is dump some points into improved Shadow Bolt. Um, just because you are going to be getting some instant Shadow Bolts, just makes sense. I dump some points into Bin, so you can actually start using Immolate in your PvE rotations without it being super, super clunky. Get one point in Shadow Burn real quick, and then we're just going to go full Imp with the remaining nine points. So improve Fire Bolt. We can go improved Imp to increase the effect of your Imp's Fire Bolt. Most importantly, Blood Pact is also really nice, I guess, to buff up. Uh, two points in improved Health Stone, just for that increased healing. And then that gives us a couple of points just to give our imp some more mana. And I got this is a pretty good leveling spec to go for. Some people wouldn't even go as far as kind of dumping points into Shadow Mastery and getting Dak packed. Fine. If you want to do it that way, if you want to kind of branch out into other specs a bit sooner, um, maybe go more into Destro for, you know, Destructive Reach or whatever, then you can totally do that as well. But this will be my choice for the most efficient uh, possible, you know, leveling spec that I would go for Affliction. Now, just quickly resetting this tree. Some of you guys might be like me. You might be dumb as fuck and want to level as destruction, right? Welcome to the team, boys. So if you want to level as destruction, don't do what I did. Don't do this. Don't put these five points into improved Shadow Bolt. It's almost never worth it. Uh, it feels good when it pays off on a boss and like your first Shadow Bolt crits against the boss. It's like, yeah, I'm going to fucking spam so much damage now. And that feels nice, but realistically, like you get value out of this. It feels like once every... 20 minutes or something. It's just really not that good. What I should have done is 5 points into Cataclysm, um, which effectively reduces the mana cost of your Destro spells by 5%. This is kind of just like having 5% more mana just permanently while leveling. Because if you're, you know, specking into Destruction and you've got your 5 points in Bane, most of the spells you cast anyway are going to be like Immolate, Shadow Ball, and obviously the beautiful Shadow Man. So yeah, that's what your tree should look like with the first like 11 points. Devastation, bit of a no-brainer. Um, I'd actually dump all points into this before going for Destructive Reach. Couple of points into there. Then I would go back for Improved Shadow Bolt. Then and only then, just to kind of fill out the tree a little bit. Uh, Ruin, Improved Immolate, we obviously need five points in as well. And at this point, it's just kind of up in the air. It really depends what you want to do. If you're finding yourself, you know, getting caught in a lot of ganks, like I have been, then you might want to funnel some points into Improved Searing Pain at this point. That's totally reasonable. Um, but if you're just content and you're, and you're happy to just continue leveling, you're not really having any issues with gankers, then I think I'd recommend going Ember Storm over the rest of Improved Shadow Bolt. I think I'd just put five points, or rather we only needed four points in that, and then finally picking up Conflag. Um, and from here, we got to go straight into Affliction. Why? Because Affliction is the best leveling spec. You should have been going Affliction all along, man. You goddamn rebel. So we got five points into Corruption, two points into Improved Life Tap, and then at this point, you've only got 13 points left. It's really up to you what you do at this point. I personally, again, am a big, big fan of the Imp, just because I like dungeons a lot. So once I got these points into Affliction, um, I just go for the Improved Firebolt, I'd go for Improved Imp, uh, the Hellstone to finish off the tree here, and then I would kind of just spam into Fell Intellect. And then this remaining value point, honestly, probably just Suppression. Um, which actually, never mind, you've just dinged level 60, so this spec is now just crap for most everything at endgame, so ignore that last point. Last point just doesn't even matter, we're not even going to spend it, okay? That's what my leveling Destruction Warlock spec um, would look like. Now, savage me in the comments, goddammit. <laughs> Everybody's going to have a different opinion on this. Uh, if you want a more official opinion, then just Google WoW Classic Warlock leveling spec, like leveling build, and yeah, there you go. But this is my tier up, which is what you guys asked for, so there it is. Now, those are the leveling specs. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and close that window, because let's be real, this Affliction one is far superior to the Destruction one. So I'm going to go ahead and link this one down below in the video description, if you want to, you know, check this out yourself and maybe use this spec. Um, now we're going to cover three specs that I would love to try out. And, and play mostly for PvP at Endgame. So again, I just want to reiterate, okay? I don't look up any builds when it comes to my PvP specs. I never have. You know, I've played Warlock since goddamn the Burning Crusade. I never found it fun or engaging to look up the best spec, you know? I'm really, really into attempting 2v1s and 3v1s and things like that, and I'm really taking that into account when I've uh, kind of designed these builds that I want to try out. So bear that in mind, these might not be the best that, you know, the very best players are playing. They're certainly not good PvE specs, as far as I'm concerned. But for PvP, which is what the game is all about for me, really, 
uh, these are the specs that I am stoked to try out. So this is by far the most standard Destruction Warlock build that I'm looking to try. Um, obviously we have the five points in Corruption, Instant Corruption, it's just too valuable to kind of miss out on. Uh, the Improved Hellstone and Demonic Embrace, this is going to be a commonality across pretty much all uh, Destruction Warlock PvE, uh, sorry, PvP specs. Just that improved 15% stamina is unbelievable. 20% uh, healing on Hellstone, two talent points. It's so much value for, you know, such a small investment that you really can't skimp out on these, in my opinion. Now, for the destruction portion of the tree, this is just a very, very searing pain focused, kind of like fire damage focused uh, build that we got going on here. So, obviously, we've just kind of missed out on improved Shadowbolt. This is not really necessary for this spec anyway. So, we've put some points into Cataclysm. We've got some points in Bane. We've got five points in Aftermath. I think that every little bit of CC you can get with this spec, especially because you're going to be spamming so many Searing Pins and just so many destruction specific spells that you should be able to get pretty good value uh, out of your Aftermaths. All these talents here kind of self-explanatory, Grim Reach, um, or rather Destructive Reach, Devastation, all that business. These are all kind of obvious. A small change you can make is like one less point in Improved Searing Pain and put it in Ember Storm instead. If you're going to be trying for a lot of, you know, Pets to Juice, uh, Soul Fire openers, that's going to give you a bit more value, but I think that the oops, improved Searing Pain is going to be just more consistent. So this is the this is probably the bread and butter spec that I would go for for PvP and WoW Classic. The other two that we're about to cover are a little bit more experimental. So this one is a much, much more deep uh, destruction spec. As you can see, we haven't even gone for improved Corruption. Now this is dumb as fuck. Honestly, we should probably just go for improved corruption, okay? We should probably drop some fucking points to make Searing Pain and, uh, like, Ember Stone. Maybe drop these points out of improved Hellstone even and just kind of dump them in here like this. And that would be a lot more sensible, right? But fuck it, man. We aren't looking for what's sensible. We're looking for what's fun. So we're going to dump all these points back into destruction and have a 744 zero. Or rather, 0744 kind of build. And the main difference here is that of course we've invested some points into intensity and therefore pyroclasm for the three second stun. Now I'm not a believer in pyroclasm. I think it's super powerful. Like oh my god dude, a three second stun after you land a soul fire? Like that's just insane. But realistically speaking, how often real like how many pets to juice soul fire combos per hour are you going to get in something like world PvP? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's actually quite tough to get off. First of all, you have to find, like, an ally player on their own. You have to find an enemy player on their own so that the other guy isn't going to interrupt you. They have to not trinket the pets of juice and just, like, outrange your soul fire or you're interrupted or whatever. So, it's actually... <laughs> it's not as straightforward as it seems to get this shit off, you know? Spanners get thrown in the works all the time, and it's only a 26% chance to stun. So, this is, like, a balls deep destruction spec. I'm looking forward to playing this, you know, purely for the purposes of creating montages, to be honest. I think that this is an amazing spec to play, you know, once you get like a ton of gear, um, and you're just looking to one-shot some fools and have some fun and record some sweet clips and listen to awesome music and what have you, and um, just global the fuck out of people while they just can't play their character. I think that could be really, really cool, but it definitely lacks the consistency of the first spec that we chose in my opinion. And that brings us on to spec number three, and this one gets me wiggly, this one gets me excited. It's a 21723 complete hybrid Destruction Warlock PvP spec. So I call it Destruction Warlock PvP spec, but honestly, it's as Affliction as it is Destruction as you can see. So in Affliction we go all the way down to, you know, Grim Reach, Nightfall, and Siphon Life. So we've got a bunch of instant cast you know, super powerful dots in there, uh, good range, the chance to proc instant cast Shadow Bolts, it just seems pretty cool, right? We also skimped out on going for Curse of Exhaustion. Why is Curse of Exhaustion not that valuable? Because here we've actually still gone four points into Aftermath. We're still investing heavily, heavily in Aftermath. Um, but before we get to that, you know, we've got the standard seven points for Supreme Survivability in the Demonology Tree. Well, I hope it'll be Supreme Survivability anyway. I'm sure Rogues will have something to say about that. But in the Destruction Tree, we've got Improved Shadow Bolt because most of the spells we're going to cast anyway are going to be Affliction. So, going for Cataclysm here, meh, I, I just don't think that it's that valuable. Um, we've obviously gone for Bane, the Aftermath like we talked about, um, and all of the good stuff like Shadowburn and the Destructive Reach. So, this spec is really going to the max on Instant Cast spells. It's pushing for those Instant Cast Shadow Bolts, 
shadow ban spam you're gonna be playing this spec with like 50 fucking soul shards in your bags at all times um all these instant dots i'm not sure how this is gonna perform it's not gonna have the best that destruction warlocks have but i'm thinking that if you're only in like a group fight you know there's like three hordes and four alliance or something because let's be real alliance players don't fight unless they outnumber the hordes right i'm gonna get some shit for that but if you're in like a fight like that a big group based fight and you can just stay at the back and let your, you know, frontliners take the brunt of the damage, and you're just fucking dotting the shit out of everything. Immolates, Siphon Lives, everything, the lot. Man, the amount of fucking damage you're gonna be able to get off in a PvP setting with this. All those damn Nightfall procs, all the damn long range that you got, the Shadow Band getting spammed on cooldown. Like, holy shit, I'm wiggly to try out this spec. It might be total crap. It might be total fucking garbage. But, yeah, man. This one gets me excited. And that's it. That's all I got, man. That's all I got for Destruction Warlock Talents. So a lot of you guys have been asking as well for a macro-based video. Honestly, I don't really have any macros. <laughs> all I'm using right now is mouse over macros. That's really it. Obviously, you can't really set a focus target in WoW Classic. The, like, the features doesn't exist. So all those focus macros, all of that cool stuff just doesn't really exist. So all my macros are just pretty boring, to be honest. I don't think it's really necessary to cover those in a video so with that we're just gonna wrap it up here let me know what specs you guys are looking forward to play once you hit max level as well pretty hyped to hear what builds you guys got in mind all of the specs that we covered here um, excluding the destruction wall leveling spec are gonna be linked down below in the video description if you want to check those out so yeah just do that if you're interested god damn it thanks for watching everybody have a fantastic day happy leveling and wow classic stick together boys we can get through this man we can make max level Let's make it happen. It's going to be sweet. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. I am going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later.